from Southeast Ohio, it's there's so many people there that, that don't have a lot, and I'm up here for all those kids in Athens. And you guys can be up here too. Joe Burrow is the real deal. <laughs> From being overlooked and constantly counted out, Joe Burrow has had one of the most incredible and inspiring stories in NFL history. Today I'm going to tell the whole life story of Joe Burrow and his rise to becoming a franchise QB. What's going on everyone? Thank you all for clicking on this video. If you enjoy it, I would really appreciate it if you dropped a like and left a comment. Also make sure to subscribe, only 1% of you guys that watch my videos are subscribed. It takes less than 5 seconds and you can always change your mind. I spend a lot of time and effort making these videos and all your support really means the world. So on December 10th in 1996, Joe Burrow was born in Ames, Iowa. His father Jim was a defensive back at Nebraska and was drafted by the Packers in the 1976 NFL Draft. After playing one season in the NFL, Jim would end up playing in the Canadian League for five more seasons and was a two-time All-Star. He then went into coaching and Joe Burrow was actually born while Jim was coaching at Iowa State. Joe Burrow's family is full of athletic history dating all the way back to his grandmother who once scored 82 points in a high school basketball game. His grandfather played D1 basketball at Mississippi State and his uncle played D1 football at Old Miss. His older brothers also went D1 at Nebraska. So it's definitely safe to say that Joey Burrow was exposed to sports very early on. It was very predictable that Joe was going to be a solid football player with his family history, but no one would have expected him to be a QB. That is because his whole family played on the defensive side of the ball. It all started in third grade when Joe's team didn't have a quarterback. This meant it was up to the coach's son to step up to the task, and that's exactly what Burrow did and he actually looked pretty natural at the position. Joe's dad eventually ended up coaching at North Dakota State, and his offensive coordinator commented about how Joe Burrow had a bright future at football after watching him. The Burrow family eventually made their way over to Athens, Ohio, and that is where Joe spent most of his childhood. This meant that Joe Burrow would be attending Athens High School, and he led their football team to three straight playoff appearances, and their first seven playoff wins in program history. In Burrow's junior season, he was named the Ohio Gatorade Player of the Year and was named to All-State. Even winning all these awards, Joe Burrow was still flying way under the radar and nobody knew the potential that he had. Joe even had to message a high school recruiting analyst to figure out if there was any camps he should attend to get his name out there. Whatever Burrow changed going into his senior season worked because he instantly began gaining popularity and was named Ohio's Mr. Football after throwing for over 4,500 yards and throwing 63 touchdowns. While Joe Burrow was dominating on the football field, he was also a solid basketball player. He played point guard and received several mid-level college offers. Living by Cleveland, he was a Cavs fan and his favorite player was Matthew Della Vadova. He was often seen on the LSU sidelines wearing his jersey because he loved the hustle Delhi played with on the court. Although he loved basketball, he knew his priorities and mainly focused on football. Joe Burrow after his senior season was ranked a 4 star recruit and the 8th best dual threat quarterback. After visiting Ohio State and Coach Meyer, he decided to commit to being a Buckeye. Joey's college career didn't quite start out the way he wanted. He was redshirted as a freshman and then served as a backup the next few seasons and he knew he needed to move on to give himself a chance. Burrow of course ended up transferring to LSU and then the rest was history. We all know what ultimately happened with Joe Burrow at LSU, but it didn't start out that way. Joe wasn't handed the keys to the offense right away and he actually wasn't even named the starter. But as a common theme for Joe, he never would give up and always overcame. In order to win the starting position, he had to beat out teammate Miles Brennan in an intense competition. Joe had a solid first season at LSU, throwing for 2,984 yards and also 16 touchdowns while only throwing 5 interceptions. Burrow led the Tigers to a 10-3 record, turning the program around into a Fiesta Bowl win over UCF who was undefeated that season. Joe Burrow only took his solid season and momentum into the offseason to get better and stronger. Joe Burrow became an absolute superstar in his senior year and his season took off in a week 2 win where he lit up the Texas Longhorns. 
By the middle of the season, it was clear that LSU was one of the best teams in college football and they could potentially win a championship. Joe showed the world what he can do when he rolled into Tuscaloosa and dropped 46 points on the Crimson Tide while throwing for nearly 400 yards. LSU ended the regular season undefeated and then rolled into the SEC Championship where they absolutely beat down Georgia in a 37-10 win with Burrow throwing for 350 yards. A week later, Joe won the Heisman Trophy after an outstanding season and he was on his way to becoming the number one pick in the NFL Draft. A famous part of his speech was when he shouted out a local food bank in Athens, Ohio that struggled heavily from poverty and it went viral getting tons of donations. As if Burrow wasn't already playing at an elite level, he turned his game to another gear in the college football playoffs, winning both games in blowout fashion. They actually won by 52 total points in both games. Joe also threw for almost an incredible 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns in the two games. Those are literally Madden type of numbers, and LSU was able to cruise to a national title, and Burrow basically secured his spot as the number one pick. He threw 60 touchdowns to only 5 interceptions, and many consider it the best all-around college football season ever. Now that Burrow had already turned around two football programs, it was time for his biggest task. On April 23rd in 2020, Joe Burrow was selected first overall by the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals were a bad team with no direction, they didn't have many weapons, they had no offensive line and a bad defense, so this was a tall task for Joey. The weight of an entire city was now on Burrow's shoulders. After a 2-14 season, the Bengals hadn't made it past the wild card since 1990 and nothing was going good for the franchise. Nobody expected to win in Joe's first season, but he was able to show some flashes of what he was capable of. Burrow became the first rookie QB ever to throw for 300 yards in 3 straight games and things were already starting to turn around for Cincinnati. That is until in week 11 he tore his ACL and MCL and would be out for the rest of the season. Although this injury was unfortunate, it was bound to happen with the offensive line that Burrow was lining up behind. Also it allowed for the Bengals to receive a better draft pick, which ended up being Jamar Chase the following draft. No matter how many people doubted Joe, after this injury it was clear he was built different because he made a full recovery in time for week one of the 2021-22 season. People also still felt the need to question if Burrow would be able to win games at the pro level and not just put up stats. This was an unfair thing to say about him because anyone with common sense would just look at the roster he was playing with. In 2021, the Bengals slightly improved their team, but Joe Burrow played phenomenal and turned some of his critics into fans. The Bengals were a solid team in the regular season, getting a 10-7 record, but nobody thought anything too crazy of it. Cincinnati, of course, went on a crazy Cinderella run, starting with a round one win against the Raiders, which honestly already satisfied most Cincy fans. Joe Burrow had earned himself the nickname Joey Franchise with his ability to almost single-handedly turn around the team from the bottom of the league into contention. In the next round, Burrow and the Bengals got a dramatic win with a game-winning field goal against the Tennessee Titans on the road. With this win, the Bengals now had to face the almighty Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. Joe Burrow didn't back down one bit, and they were able to upset the Chiefs with another game-winning field goal to advance to the Super Bowl. Joe Burrow proved to the entire world that he is special and one of the best players in the game. The Bengals ended up losing the Super Bowl in late fashion, but that doesn't take away from anything that Joe Burrow did that season. One stat that stood out from Joe Burrow's season was that he led the entire league in completion percentage. Overall, it was a magical season for Joe Burrow and the Bengals, and I only expect for him to get better. Joe has been such an inspiration to so many people from all the things he's had to overcome, and I can't wait to see what's in store for the future. That's going to be the end of this video. Let me know in the comments below what player I should make one on next. This video took a long time to plan out and make, so I would really appreciate all your support. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, I'll see you all later.